Allah'ın أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أكرمه بالنبوته وجعله رحمة للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس يسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد My brothers, my sisters, distinguished elders The first and the foremost thing that we need to warn and inform ourselves Is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So I say to you, Ibad Allah, usikum wa usi nafsi bi taqwa Allah I advise myself first, I warn myself first before you to observe the necessity of upholding taqwa. Amma ba'd, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today I have only one item of news and that is to do with Bahrain. There are so many items everywhere and you see killings and killings going on everywhere in Syria, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan. But because of the... Uh, event in Bahrain and uh, what is going on in, in Bahrain is, is, is important that we should know it. In a dramatic escalation of uh, Al Khalifa enmity towards Bahraini people, the dictator and his entourage decided to execute a Bahraini man, Mahir Abbas Al Khabbaz, on trumpeted charges. He is linked to alleged bomb making activities that led to the death of a policeman. Five others accused in the case have received five years prison sentence. One Bahraini has also been sentenced to six years imprisonment. This case resonates with that of Isa Qambar, who was executed by the regime in 1996 on unproven charges. Bahrainis and their supporters are planning a big campaign next month to call for an immediate end to the Saudi military occupation of Bahrain. This will include protests inside and outside Bahrain seminars and press conferences, public meetings with participation from anti-war campaigners and lobbying of Western governments to stand up against this evil occupation and demand the immediate withdrawal of Saudi troops from Bahrain. They will also call for removal of Al Khalifa regime, which had sold the country and compromised its sovereignty. The Saudis had invaded Bahrain in mid-March 2011 and participated in atrocities against Bahrainis their mosques, doctors, athletes, teachers, men, women and children. In the past week, Amnesty International issued two statements. The first was a warning to the Al Khalifa clan not to use force to crack down on the proposed protests marking the third anniversary, anniversary of the revolution. People must be allowed freedom to congregate, to protest and express their demands freely without fear of a tax or retribution. The ruling Al Khalifa clan did not heed the call. Many Bahrainis were injured either by shotgun pellets or chemical gases used extensively by regime's forces. The second was about Zainab Al Khawaja who was released this week but awaits dictator's decision in other charges against her. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all our brothers and sisters everywhere where they are facing all this killings and persecution. إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما In my last khutbah I pointed out that according to some commentators the term آثارهم which is a verse in Surah Yasin Surah number 36, uh, verse number 12, Surah number 36, 
وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ What is وَآثَارَهُمْ وَآثَارَهُمْ according to some, some commentators are the offspring, the children that we leave behind and how they have been brought up. I also mentioned various duties and responsibilities of parents in guiding and educating their children. How important it is to cultivate love and respect between parents and children. The consequences of indulging and being overprotective to a child. Training children to handle their responsibilities. The adverse effects of negative emotions and the importance of establishing a healthy line of communications between parents and children. This topic of parenting affects all of us in some way or another that I have been discussing about. It, it affects us all and has been spoken and written about in so many books. Today, let us look at other aspects of parenting, how to raise children. This is called tarbiyah, the upbringing of children. And what are the recommendations that parents need to observe to ensure their children's physical, moral, and spiritual growth and development? Number one, submitting to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First and foremost, it is the duty of parents to inculcate in their children the correct belief of Tawheed. Very important. The oneness of Allah. This involves teaching children the rights of Allah, followed by all religious acts of worship that are needed for them to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The principles of Tawheed should never be taken lightly because they mark the boundaries of entering Islam. Mu'adh bin Jabal narrates that once he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, He asked me, inform me about those acts which would entitle me to be admitted to paradise, to Jannah. And the Prophet replied, worship Allah, that is Tawheed, and do not associate anything with, with him. No shit. Establish prayer, pay the zakat, observe the fast of the month of Ramadan, and perform hajj to the sacred house of Kaaba. Therefore, as part of the training program, parents should ensure that they train their children in all the rituals of worship, including five times obligatory prayers, fasting, charity, hajj, reciting the Quran, and so on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بَنِيهِ وَيَعْقُوبِ And Nabi Ibrahim enjoined this creed upon his sons. And Yaqub did the same as well. Ya Baniya, inna Allah has tafa lakumuddin. Oh my children, Allah has chosen, has selected for you this creed. Fala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. And so do not die except as Muslims, except when you are submitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see in this verse that Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam not only submitted himself to the will of God, but also took special care that his children too should ensure that the spirit of leading the lives of submission and resignation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very important. The words, فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Let not death overtake you unless you are a Muslim, except in a state of submission. This points out to the fact that one should always lead the life of submission to the will of Allah before death overtakes him. Number two, building confidence in your child. This is very, very important. It is a sad comment on the society in general that the weak and the less privileged are looked down upon as backward, as unworthy children, while giving importance to those who value to, 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 to they, they give value to beauty and riches and power and things like that. All children, regardless of their race, background or mental or academic faculties and abilities, they deserve their rightful place in the society to be treated with respect and dignity. Some strategies, strategies which parents can adopt for ensuring to, that their children grow up with self-confidence 
and self worth in the children for example are the following number one first of all examine your own impression of your child first what is imp your impression of your own child ask yourself a question are you as a parent secretly disappointed because you feel that your child is ordinary like unlike some other children are you ask yourself that question have you at times rejected or ignored your child just because he does not possess those qualities which would otherwise stand him out as a brilliant child a parent should understand that the product of their child's beliefs and confidence in himself depends in many ways upon what he thinks about how you as a parent sees him and values him very important that the child knows and he sees how you see him how you value him when he is convinced that he is held with love with affection regard and respect by his parents he gains confidence he feels wanted and he feels accepted and sees himself as a worthy person many children do know that their parents love them and would give even their life for them but at the same time they can easily detect when you have some doubt about their ability and their worth they can detect it for example you will find that some parents become somewhat nervous the moment their children start opening their mouth and speaking to their to the guests the, the parents interrupt their conversation and try and explain to the guests what their children were really trying to say hence parents need to be on their guard not to do anything like this as it steps it steps the confidence of their children parents can adopt a good habit and that is to encourage their child to face the challenges of life and draw lessons from them but with the knowledge that the parents are right behind them if they need their support this way if the child ever makes a mistake they are not worried that they would they and they would try again number 2 building blocks of self esteem self respect what do you do as i mentioned in my last friday khutbah parents must demonstrate their strong love for their children i should like to dwell upon this element further show your natural love to your child by hugging your child by kissing your child this just gesture gesture on your part leaves a permanent impression in the minds of children and they will never forget it one day a bedouin boasted if he was very proud and he boasted before the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam that he never kissed a child he said ma qabbaltu sabiyan qattu i've never kissed it, my child i've never kissed a child and the prophet said after he had left hada rajulun indi annahu min ahli an-nar this rajul this man belongs in my opinion to me this man belongs to the people of hell number 3 help your child think positive a child who suffers from inferiority complex often displays his lack of confidence and his deficiencies when he enters in conversation with someone who gives him a sympathetic ear such a child who lacks the sense of self assurance are not confident of themselves becomes pessimistic loses confidence and conviction in himself he feels there is no future for him and no hope for making any progress in his life it is important therefore that parents instill a think positive attitude in such a child a single remark of appreciation for your child can have a profound effect in lifting his spirit it can work as a stimulus and impel your child to devote his entire life towards attaining success it requires a single gesture of support 
and appreciation on the part of the children. For their children to be lifted up. Unfortunately, it's lacking with some people. This child who was suffering from inferiority com complex once, he acquires the spirit of self-recognition. An important element that paves the way for his self-development. There are many people who owe their success and their achievement due to their appreciation and generous compliments showered upon them by their parents. Number four, and this is very important, is domestic differences. Parents must realize that they carry added responsibility on their shoulders after having children. This is the time when they have to make sincere efforts to abstain from domestic differences. These arguments, these fights between the elders of the house will definitely have negative effect on the development of the child. Proper upbringing of the children cannot take place if the atmosphere of unity and peace does not exist at home. When parents quarrel and exchange strong abusive language, they forget the damage they are doing to their children by creating a negative picture in their minds. Their hearts cry over the attitude of their parents and are unable to decide whose side they should take. These childhood experiences at home, when parents used to fight and exchange abusive language, becomes permanently imprinted in the minds of the children. Until they grow into adulthood, it is still there. It becomes very difficult for them to erase these bitter memories in their minds. Some children take these fights so seriously, so seriously, that they become victim of anxiety and depression for a long, long time. Somebody wrote the following to a counselor about his bitter experiences as, as a child. And I quote exactly what he said. He said, the thought of an unpleasant event in my childhood does not leave my memory. My father was ill-mannered and selfish. He used to invent excuses to fight at home and shout at everyone. Our parents used to fight throughout the day. The fights generally used to be on trivial things. There was no night that I went to bed without shedding tears. This is the reason why my nerves were weak. I am a scared person and I get bad dreams. I have consulted doctors who say that the reason for my condition is due to the effects of the bad atmosphere at home. He writes at the end, I appeal to parents in the name of Allah. Please, if you have any differences, please do not fight in the presence of your children. If a husband is mistreating his wife and vice versa, if, is he or she going to blame him or her son or daughter when he grows up and does the same to his wife? Hmm? Relationships begin at home with oneself. What you do unto family, your child will learn to do un the same unto others. This is the fact that scientists and psychologists will tell you. So if you want to have good children, Start with yourself first. Start with your own relationship with your spouse. The first step to have a good relationship with children is to be good man and good woman yourself. If you are civil, if you are polite and respectful to each other, your children will inherit the same trait. Now, number five, violence against children. Children are like flowers. Their physical and mental makeup is very, very fragile. Ill treatment and physical abuse at home or outside can leave a permanent mental scar on the child. Parents therefore should educate their children how to protect themselves or expose those per per persons who abuse them. Such children need extra care extra help and attention so that they do not carry their trauma into adulthood but grow into normal, healthy and happy adults. Number six, treat your children fairly. All children with the family have 
their own rights to be treated fairly. Parents should not show undue preference and take side to one child only. It based on their gender or other criteria. Unfair treatment can arouse a feeling of jealousy and resentment in children that continue for life and can also lead to bitterness and division between siblings in the child's heart and towards the parents as well. إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما إن شاء الله we shall continue with the same topic next Friday which is my last خطبة إن شاء الله إن أحسن الحديث وأبلغ الموعظة كتاب الله يعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحليم الكريم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب وهو الغفور الرحيم سبحان من سبقت رحمته غضبه وبسط اليدين بالرحمة سبحان من لم يكلف نفسا إلا دون وسعها وعفى عن السيئات ولم يجاز بها سبحان من لا يزداد على معاصي العباد إلا كرما وجودا وعلى كثرة الذنوب إلا عفوا وصفحا نشهد أن لا إله إلا هو العطوف على العباد بجوده والعواد على المذنبين بحلمه ونشهد أن محمد نبيه وحبيبه سيد المرسلين وشفيق المذنبين بعثه رحمة للعالمين صلى الله عليه وآله الداعين إلى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة قادة الأمم وأولياء النعم ومعدن الرحمة اللهم صل على سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وعلى إمام المسلمين وقائد الغر المحجلين أمير المؤمنين علي بن أبي طالب صلوات الله عليه وآله وعلى سيدة نساء العالمين وبضعة خاتم النبيين سيدتنا فاطمة بنت رسول الله صلوات الله عليها وعلى الحسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بكربلاء وعلي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليهم الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على مولانا صاحب الزمان ما حيا ثار البدي والطغيان هادم أبنية الشرق والنفاق عاصد فروع البغي والشقاق صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آبائه الكرام ما اتصلت الليالي والأيام اللهم عجل فرجه وسهل مخرجه وكل ناظرنا بنظرة منا إليه واجعلنا من المستشهدين بين يديه 
وتفضل على أمرائنا المؤمنين بمزيد التوفيقات وازدياد الإقبال وعلو الدرجات اللهم افعل بنا ما أنت أهله ولا تفعل بنا ما نحن أهله بجاه محمد وآله المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين اللهم اجعلنا ممن يذكر فتنفعه الذكرى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يئذكم لعلكم تذكرون آه.